Hey, what's up? Vikram Deal here with the Real Estate Growth Academy. And I wanted to unpack a couple of questions that I've been getting about. What is the conscious communication method, right? What is this new method, Vikram, that you've created that is going to be so much better than everything else that I've learned? And here's the thing. Most real estate agents have been taught the same script, the same rapport building, the same listening skills as every other real estate agent out there. The problem with that, the challenge with that is that most of you guys are saying the same thing, doing the same thing and getting the same results. Let's be honest, right? What is communication? Communication is the transference of knowledge from one person to the other person. Communication is about actively listening to the other participant and then asking amazing questions, right? What most real estate agents do is the exact opposite. What most real estate agents do in sales is they ask a question and then they're so frantically trying to ask the next question that they totally ignore the answer that the client gave. Let me give you an example from one of my top clients who's doing over $400,000 in GCI. When we started working together, he would ask questions and the client would say something like, we need to buy a new house. The very next question he would say is, oh, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, right? Because that's what the script he was trained off of. Now that works, right? He was selling tons of homes, 40 plus houses a year, but he wasn't building any emotional connection with the prospect. So if the prospect met another agent, it's very likely that he lost deals because the client was like, oh, this is a transactional based person. They don't know that, but that's what they think. Now, when a prospect says, I need to move and you say, oh, tell me more about that. And they say, well, you know, I need to move because I have two kids that are getting older, right? Now, an untrained agent will be like, oh, great. So how many bedrooms and bathrooms do you need? Because kids are getting older, probably need more space. It's kind of like a logical question. But somebody who uses a conscious communication method is going to use their listening skills Right? They're going to use their active listening skills, the conscious listening that we teach, and they're going to be like, oh, and they're going to use the right tonality. Oh, uh, well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, tell me why, you know, the kids are getting bigger, but why is it important to move now? Right? Why is it important to move now? And then the prospect's going to give you a reason. Well, you know, my oldest daughter is uh, 14. She's going into high school and... Um, the school, you know, has a good sports program. Oh, okay. What, what's important about her getting into this school and this particular program, right? What's wrong with the school district that she's currently in, right? We start building a gap and now the prospect tells themselves why they need to move, but they're also telling you, which allows you to then decide whether or not you're able to help them or not, right? Like, a lot of people are like, oh, the rates, the rates, the rates, the rates. Guess what, you guys? Rates are up and down all the time, right? When rates are at 2%, 3%, 4%, I had clients say, oh, well, I think the rates are high, Vikram. Bro, like the rates are stupid low. Well, maybe they go a little bit lower. I'm like, so your payment goes down by $60. Like, are we really going to quibble over $60 when the houses are going up 3% a month? Like, come on, guys. And they're like, well, no, that doesn't make sense. I said, it doesn't make sense. Remember when we talked originally, you told me you wanted to move because you wanted to get your daughter into this new school district for X, Y, and Z reasons. He's like, oh yeah. I'm like, has that changed? Has that changed? Or is that still important to you? He's like, no, that's still important to me. I said, is that more important than you potentially saving 50, 60, 100, 200, right? Depending on the price of the house, maybe, you know, if it was a million dollar, $2 million house, maybe four or $500 a month. He's like, well, no, that's like not even our Starbucks bill. I'm like, so what are we doing here? Yeah, you know, are we going to buy this house? Are we going to quibble? And then the market's going to go up 3% month over month. And you're going to spend an extra $75,000 to save 500. He's like, oh, that makes sense. Right. But if I didn't ask those questions and if I wasn't consciously listening and taking notes, I wouldn't have been able to help him. And then they get into the house and like, oh my God, Vikram, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Wow. You're such a great agent. You listened to us. You understood our needs. And I didn't do anything except for I asked questions and I asked questions. So then you ask the second question or the third question or the fourth question, 
right? And you want to get them to go deep. So tell me, it, it's important that your daughter gets into this new school because they have this sport program. What else is important about moving now? Oh, well, the kids are getting bigger. They're sharing a bathroom, right? They're sharing a bathroom. And so we need a, we need more bathrooms. Now, the average agent, right? The average sales agent, the average realtor is going to assume that that's a problem, right? Because we've all seen shared bathroom situations with a teenager. And so we just naturally assume that we know the answer. But the person who uses a conscious communication method, who's consciously listening to ask the right questions, right, is going to say something along the lines of, oh, well, that's really interesting. Um, why, why, why is that a big deal? Why is that a big deal? Oh, well, Vikram, have you ever had children? No, I don't have kids. I don't know what, why it's a big deal. Well, have you ever shared a bathroom? I, I've shared, yes, I've shared bathrooms, many bathrooms. Yeah, lots. Um, what, what's, what's the problem here? Oh, well, I have a daughter and a son. The daughter wants to do makeup and do her hair. My son's like, I just want to get in and out of the shower, but he can't because there's one sink, one bathroom, right? It's the split level, but it says the split doors. So he's got a door in his room or there, there's a, you know, line of people. He's banging on the door. She's banging on the door. They're yelling, screaming. It interrupts my wife who works from home. It interrupts my phone calls because I work from home. So the kids are fighting. They're, you know, killing each other half the time. And we just don't want that anymore. Oh, so... Is this a now thing that we're working on or is this something that like you can wait another year or two? No, no, Vikram, this is a now thing. Like my wife is frustrated beyond belief because the kids come home, they're screaming, they're yelling, they're fighting. She's trying to have a Zoom call, right? She's trying to talk to her CEO and they're screaming at each other. Oh, okay, interesting. Why else do you want to move, right? And you just let them talk, right? Let them talk. Oh, well, my son, you know, he's into tech. And the school that he could go to if we move into this neighborhood would allow him to have this amazing tech program because they're super into tech because blah, 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 blah. Oh, and what happens if we don't get him into that school? What happens if you wait for two years? Oh, well, he's going to have a disadvantage, right? Like he could potentially have a disadvantage compared to the other children. Oh, is that important to you to give your kids all the advantages possible? Of course it is. Oh, Okay. Like, so it sounds like family's really important to you. Yeah, my family's everything to me. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Tell me, tell me why they matter so much to you. Tell me why is it so important to you, right? You just keep allowing them to talk, right? We don't need to give our credentials. We don't need to tell them how many houses we sold. We don't need to tell them what company we're with. We don't need to tell them that we were the top five agents in the neighborhood. They don't care about that, you guys. You know what they care about is their problems, and can you find a solution to that? And then when you go, wow, sounds like you have a lot of great reasons to move, right? You don't need to ask them if they're working with another agent. Who cares? Like if they're working with another agent, they'll tell you. So we don't ask those questions, right? But if you're untrained, you do. And then they're going to say what every salesperson gets the answer, right? Oh, are you interested in looking at that car today, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer? No, no, we're just here looking. Really, you're looking at 112 degree heat on pavement that your shoes are melting into. We're frying eggs out here for fun. And you're just looking, you're sweating. You have no water. You're just looking at cars in the heat. Like you guys have nothing better to do on a hundred degree day than come look at cars or a freezing cold day, just looking at cars. They're going to say, oh, no, no, we're just looking. Oh, are you working with an agent? Yeah, we have a couple of agents. Yeah, our friend's an agent. Yeah, our daughter's uncles, brothers, dogs, keepers, an agent. Right. Oh, we, we, you know, we worked with an agent years ago. Oh, okay. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. Okay. Bye. And you lost a prospect that doesn't have an agent, but it's our natural resistance to put up the wall. But if you just go into asking great questions, right. And then listening and then asking deeper questions, sometimes you might hit a wall and you just come back and you go down a different path. But if you learn to ask these great questions, imagine the connection that these people have to you. Because when they tell you the problem, they're also telling themselves the problem. When they tell you the problem, they're opening up to things that are important to them, to you, which makes you an advisor. It makes you somebody they trust. They want to get to know more, right? Then at the end of the call, 15 minutes go by, you say, hey, we should probably, you know, it probably makes sense if we, you know, sit down and before, get a cup of coffee and before the coffee gets cold, you know, even my three top reasons of uh, why you should buy now or uh, why you guys should wait for, you know, a year. 
And they're like, oh, no, 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 we don't want to wait, Vikram. We need to buy now. Oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you the three things that all my top clients are doing to, to get the best deal, right? To buy the best home at the best price in the best neighborhood now. And they're like, oh my gosh, yes, that sounds great. And you go from 20% of the people saying yes to an appointment to 80% of the people saying yes to an appointment. You see, we don't have a liens issue, you guys. We have a skills issue. Most real estate agents I know that quit the business had enough leads in their database. And I always ask them this question. If I had the same leads that you had in your database, if I had the same 150, 200, 300, some about thousands, right? If I had the same leads in your database, do you think that I would have been able to book a few in-person appointments? Like, yeah, probably. Do you think I would have booked more appointments than you? Probably. Do you think I would have converted a few of those people into clients? Yeah, for sure. So do you think it's really a leads issue or is it a skills issue? They go, well, we never thought about it, but I guess it's a skills issue. Yes. If we have the right skills, if we say the right things, if we consciously communicate with our clients, guess what happens? They consciously communicate back to us and then we can help guide them to either purchasing and selling or not purchasing and not selling, right? When you know what to say, how to say it, when to say it, where to say it, the right tonality, right? Don't be excited. Ring, ring. Hi, this is Vikram. How you doing today? Red flag, red flag, red flag. Every telemarketer says that. Every telemarketer says that. So when you call and you're just so energetic because that's what you were taught, ring, they hang up on you, right? You don't even have an opportunity, but when you call and you have the right openers, the right tonality, guess what happens? They have a conversation with you. They tell you their deepest, darkest fears and secrets. I've had people on role play calls, right? People that I've never met on Zooms with 30 people and we start the role play and they tell me so much stuff. And at the end of the call, the, at the end of the, the call, the role play, they go, I can't believe I started the role play out like with a fake scenario, but three minutes in or three seconds into it, I'm telling you everything and three minutes into it, like I'm practically in tears with you, Vikram. And I'm in 30 people and I know this is being recorded and I don't know why I'm sharing this with you. Well, it's a conscious communication method, right? I'm not asking surface level conversational questions. You can use this in dating, right? I went on a date last night, really awesome woman. And she goes, I'm so happy that I came out on this spontaneous date. I said, why? She said, because you listen and you ask questions and you get me thinking about things that I, I wouldn't normally think about. She's like, I've gone on dates with guys and they say, so what's your favorite color? What kind of music are you into? Which is great. She's like, you know, it's great to get to know me. She's like, but we went into a deep conversation where I'm sharing things about things that I haven't talked to like my best friends about. And I was like, isn't that what life's about? Deep connection with somebody? She's like, yeah, it's just, it's just not common. And it's just so like we laughed, we kind of teared up a little bit, right? That's how it should be with the prospect. You guys should laugh. You guys should have fun. You guys should get them to the brink of emotional breakdown where they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm telling you all this stuff. Like this is my deepest, darkest secret. You don't have to have these wild, crazy Ford questions. Like Ford is such a load of crap, right? So many of my clients come in there. They've <clears throat> been trained with the, uh, the, the big agency that's got all the red signs. You might know who they are. And they go, well, Vikram, we're great at building rapport. I said, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's build some rapport, right? Let's build some rapport. And they go, oh, well, tell me a little bit about your family. I'm like, I'm not telling you about my family. I don't know you. What do you do for work? I'm like, okay, I'll tell you about that. What do you like to do for fun? I'm like, why, 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 why does any of this matter? Right? Why does any of this matter? Like, well, that's what we were taught to ask. And I said, and what's your guys' number of conversations that turn into appointments? Is it high or low? Because most agents don't unfortunately track their KPIs. I said, is it high or low? They go, well, it's, it's okay. I said, is it where you want it to be? Because, you know, obviously we don't want to say we're not doing what we should be doing. We're not as good. They, well, it's not quite as high as we'd like it to be. Oh, okay. What's, what's missing? 
I don't know. We're asking all the questions our broker tells us. We're asking all the questions that the sales trainer inside the brokerage tells us. I said, oh, okay. Is the sales trainer in your office actively selling? Like, are they in sales? Were they top sales people? They go, I don't know. We never asked. If they were top sales people, why would they be doing training? Like, it's a valid question we should ask. If they're a top salesperson, why are they now doing training instead of selling houses and making 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, $100,000 commissions? Well, because they really weren't the top, right? If they were at the top of their game, they'd be crushing it. They wouldn't have time to spend four hours, five days a week doing training. It doesn't make sense, does it? So typically they weren't the top of their game. They went to the school, they went to the classes, they learned, they're regurgitating and it works for some people, but 80 to 90% of real estate agents are out of business in two to four years. Most real estate agents make less than minimum wage when you take all the hours, combine them together and put it in a package and divide it by their income. Most real estate agents make less than minimum wage, which is why there's such a high failure rate. And it's not your fault that nobody trained you. It's just, they don't know the modern technologies. They don't study sales. They don't study human performance. They don't study human psychology. They don't study how to connect with people deeply. If you can just connect with people deeply, right? Just by asking the right questions, using the right tones, using the right pauses, the right st st stutters. Oh, ah, you know, the old lost grandpa. Oh, I was just, um, I was just curious. Um, I just had this thought maybe possibly, um, you know, what, what if we, what if we do this? What if we, uh, sit down for a, uh, a cup of coffee and, uh, before the coffee gets cold, I'll share with you, um, my top three reasons, right? The top three tips of why you should sell your house in this market versus waiting. And, and if, and if you like it, then we can possibly see about, you know, discussing some tactics to help you um, sell your home as a for sale by owner. And if those don't work, well, you know, now you have my information if you want to reach back out. Is that, is that sound fair? Does that sound possible? And they're like, oh, sure. You're going to give me free information on how to sell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Why? Well, I, I know that 50% of homes aren't going to sell. So if I meet enough people and I help enough, help enough people, then, you know, karma, the law of reciprocity is going to come back to me. Full disclosure, honesty. You guys would be surprised at how honesty works, but it's, you got to have the conversation. You got to get the people to open up. Most real estate agents can't get people to open up because they're just trying to read the script and they're trying to get through the call as fast as possible because there's so much pain in calling because you don't know how to say what you're saying. You don't know how to go deep. You don't really know how to get that emotional connection that unfortunately you build the base level rapport, which gets you a 20, 30%, 15%, 10% appointment rate. And then you go to the appointment. When you finally do get an appointment, you go to the appointment that gives everybody the appointment. So now they're interviewing 17 people and you're just one of 17 and they're laydowns. So they're going to use the last person that they meet because it's who they remember because they've met so many people, right? So in 2023, it's going to get harder to make sales and the good people, right? They're going to do okay, but the excellent people are going to crush the market and they're going to take all the sales and their teams are going to take all the sales because they're teaching them the conscious communication method. So I just wanted to give you guys a little nibble, right? I wanted to give you guys a little taste of what we do inside the Real Estate Growth Academy. We have dojo practice calls, right? Where we actually role play. We actually go deep into your scripting. We go deep into your questions, right? And then we have the installation where we install this method. We install the playbooks, the listing playbook, the buyer's presentation playbook, right? We install these different playbooks so that when you go into a presentation, you just rock the, rock the socks off of your prospect. And it causes them to want to work with you, right? Versus you having to chase them. So if you want some more information, just drop a message below. My team or I will get back to you and we'll go over next steps and see if we can possibly have a relationship to help you grow your sales, your brand, your influence 
in your current marketplace. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. I love you and I appreciate you. Let's make this the greatest year ever because the best is yet to come.